talk about your health. Living a Primal Lifestyle. Yeah, we have Tom on t- from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, hey. Uh, Hi, Tom. How you guys doing? Doing great. Right. Good. Hey, uh, your newsletter is outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so the Primal Edge, I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 6648 Now your hosts, Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark. Good morning, I'm Nico DeHaan. Welcome to Living a Primal Lifestyle, where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world to recover our natural health and regain our rights and freedoms. And it's a beautiful morning in St. Petersburg. It's 69 degrees. Uh, low tonight will be 49. By tomorrow, 62. We're in wintertime here. It's rather nice, a little muggy, but uh, everything is good. Uh, I'd like to uh, welcome you to the show and remind you to pick up our Health Signals newsletter. I have a new one out uh, right now. Uh, starts with too much screen times can, that can harm your brain development. But I have a lot more in here. I invite you to go through it. Uh, different changes in uh, what we think of meat, uh, pink slime in our ground beef. Things are not looking too well here. Beyond meat, of course, the fake meats are prominent in our society today. Uh, Plant-based meat is about to get cheaper. Right now it's more expensive. Uh, Russian, this is kind of interesting, Russian dairy farmers gave cows VR goggles to make them think they're out in the field instead of in a barn and seeing if their milk is any better. Uh, Human breast milk may help babies tell the time. In other words, sync them up to the circadian rhythms from their mom. And magic mushrooms. I have a, had a lot, a little bit of debate about this ma- magic mushroom stuff. And, uh, of course, they're talking about normal mushrooms, too. But there's a section here about the magic mushrooms and microdosing. And I had some questions about microdosing. So I have another article I'm going to put in there. I'm not going to show it to you now. It's really long and involved. But uh, it'll be really good. It'll be in the next newsletter. So that's that. Today I really want to talk about Christmas. Uh, also remind you to please pick up our Primal Edge, our one-shot wonder. Uh, if you want to start off your year with uh, something really healthy, this is the stuff that will bring it to you. And it's all uh, powered by fulvic and humic acid, which means that the good stuff goes in, the bad stuff goes out. And that's what we want. I want to talk today about Christmas around the world. Uh, you know, I'm from a different culture myself, born in the Netherlands, in Holland, and then moving at a young age, about six years old, to Canada. And then at about 18, I moved to the United States. So i got really three countries, two kind of the same, but... Uh, Let's go down the list a little bit and see what, uh, and I'm primarily interested in not only the culture and the customs, but some of the foods that they serve at at those times. So let's start with Angola. Christmas is a big celebration in Angola. Over 50% of the populations are Catholic, with at least another 25% some other kind of Christians. So going to church on Christmas Day is important. There are midnight mass services on Christmas Eve and also a mass on Christmas Day. The main Christmas meal is eaten on Christmas Day or after the Christmas Day church service. Friends and family visit each other's houses and guests are always welcome. uh, People uh, often save up through the year so they can afford special foods for the Christmas meal. In rural parts of Angola, uh, families might rear animals, especially to eat at Christmas time. The uh, traditional uh, meal consists of pariel, pariel? It's a type of cornmeal or cassava flour. A little meal right there. Uh, It uh, is served with maybe rice, spaghetti, french fries, turkey, uh, fried chicken, and dishes like ozoldi di bacali, which is cooked cold fish and vegetables. Hmm, Doesn't sound too good. And there's another dish made from uh, fish and beef with... uh, Tomatoes, garlic, okra, sweet potatoes. I think that might be what you're seeing here. Oh, this is the dessert. This is the Bora rye cake uh, due to Angola's historic connection with Portugal. It's especially popular in the cities. The main decorations for the uh, houses will be the nativity scene. Yeah, giving gifts is uh, common in the cities, more common than in rural areas. Big shops in the cities also decorate with lights for Christmas. Okay, let's go to another one here. 
I'm not going to do each one of these things, but I think it's interesting. Let's go to uh, Australia, see what our southern neighbors are about. Australia, of course, it's summertime there. Uh, it comes at the beginning of the summer holidays. Children have summer holidays from mid-December to early February, so people might even be camping at Christmas, big camping in Australia for sure. Uh, because it's so hot at Christmas time, there are often ma uh, massive bushfires across the countries. Many people volunteer to get rid of these uh, fires. Uh, the Australians hang wreaths on their front doors and sometimes go out on Christmas caroling, singing Christmas carols on Christmas Eve. People also decorate their homes with gardens, uh, with the Christmas trees and Christmas lights. Uh, even neighbors will get into little competitions to who has the best display. <clears throat> the neighbors often visit each other and look uh, at the lights display at night. Sometimes the displays are put out as early as December 1st. Oh, we get that beat here. We go by Halloween here. <clears throat> Australians also decorate their homes with bunches of Christmas bush. That's a native Australian tree with small green leaves and cream-colored flowers. Let's get to the food. I guess they don't have much food in here. On Boxing Day. Now, Boxing Day we have in Canada, too, and that's the day after Christmas, and... That's when everybody gets rid of their boxes, I guess. Uh, people go to visit friends, often have barbecues at the beach. A famous yacht race from Sydney to Hobart in Tasmania is always held uh, on Boxing Day. Most families try to be home together. I don't see anything about food on this one. Okay, so they don't eat in Australia, maybe. Let's go to Ethiopia. That's a completely different culture. Let's see what they have there. Ethiopia, an especially Ethiopian Catholic church, celebrates Christmas on January 7th, not December 25th. The Ethiopian calendar has different months, and Christmas is on the 29th of Tassus. Many other Orthodox churches around the world also celebrate Christmas on the 7th of January, something I never knew. Uh, let's see, many people take part in a special Advent fast during the 43 days before Christmas. That's a long fast. Uh, it starts 25th of November, is known as the Fast of the Prophets. During this time, traditionally, only one vegan meal is eaten each day, so it's not a complete fast. It's a vegan meal because during the fast, foods including meat, dairy, and eggs, and wine weren't eaten. For Ghana, people get dressed in white. Most people wear a traditional garment called a natella. It's a thin, white, cotton piece of cloth with brightly colored stripes across the back. And they have a picture of that here. Uh, design of the Ethiopian church is similar to the houses in the country. They often are uh, very old and have been carved out of rock. Modern churches are built on three cities, three circles, excuse me, each with in each other. The choir sing, blah, blah, blah. Traditional Christmas foods include wat, W-A-T, which is a thick and spicy stew that contains meat, vegetables, sometimes eggs. Wat is eaten on a plate. Of a with a flatbread pieces of the, the flatbread is called injera. Okay, so I'd like to remind you, please do two things: uh, pick up our Health Signals newsletter and also pick up our Primal Edge. And we're on a break here, so I'll be right back with more Christmases. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And welcome back to the show. Uh, of course, Paige isn't here. She'll be out until, I think, the 7th. She comes back, uh, January 7th. So we'll have her on the show after that. I want to talk about Christmas in the Netherlands. Of course, I was raised in the Netherlands for six years, so this is definitely in my brain. And for most children in the Netherlands, the most important day is uh, December 5th, uh, when Sinterklaas, St. Nicholas, brings them their presents. Now, St. Nicholas Day is on the 6th of December, but the Netherlands has... The major celebrations are always held on the 5th, which is St. Nicholas Eve. The name Santa Claus comes from the name Sinterklaas, which the Dutch use. It all started the second uh, Saturday of November, which is the first Saturday after the 11th of November, when Santa Claus travels to a city or town in the Netherlands. Dutch tradition says that St. Nicholas lives in Madrid, Spain, and every year he chooses a different harbor to arrive in the Netherlands so many children as possible can get a chance to see him. Sinterklaas travels with his servants called Swarte Piet, Pieten, uh, Black Pete. Uh, and it's interesting because it was Black Pete all, you know, for years and years. And now some of the left has come in and said, uh uh, we can't use black people. So why don't we call him Swarte Piet or Suta Piet? So Suta Piet would be uh, Soot Piet. Uh, in other words, he comes down the chimney, he's got all kinds of soot on him. And now there's kind of a tradition. Some of them are still Black Pete. Some of them now are the Sutta Pete. And uh, that's where the fight is. So it's kind of silly. These are just traditions. And, you know, I don't think it does any harm. Santa Claus travels with, the, with these guys. And uh, Santa Claus is dressed in his red robes. And I've got a picture of him here. A rather royal guy. And uh, when... Uh, the Pete's, Black Pete's and Santa Claus come ashore from the steamboat. All the local churches ring in celebration. Santa Claus is dressed in his red robes, leads the procession through the town riding a white horse. Every town in the Netherlands has a Santa Claus helpers, dressed as the same as Santa Claus, kind of the same as Santa Claus, right? Who help uh, give the presents out. And sometimes you might see more than Swarte, uh, Swarte Pete and with the Santa Claus, more Black Pete's. And so a lot of times there's more than one. Children are told that the Black Pete keep a record of all things that are done in the past year in a big book. And children, the good children, will be given presents by Santa Claus, but bad children will be put in the sack. And Suarte Pete takes them back to Spain for a year to teach them how to behave. Whoa, there's a real controversy there. On the evening that Santa Claus arrives in the Netherlands, uh, children leave a shoe out by the fireplace. I remember that, and I remember mine was a wooden shoe. Sometimes uh, <clears throat> a windowsill... 
<clears throat> or on a windowsill, and sometimes they sing Sinterklaas songs. They hope the Sinterklaas will come during the night with presents. They also believe if they leave some hay and carrots in their shoes for Sinterklaas's horse, they will be left some sweets and a small present. They're told that during the night, Sinterklaas rides on the roof sun uh, on his horse, and that a Swatapit will then climb down a chimney or through a window and put the presents in, or the candy in their shoes. Many families, the children are told that Santa Claus and Black Pete make a weekly visit, so children leave their shoe by the fireplace or a window every Saturday until the main party begins. The evening of December 5th is called St. Nicholas Eve or Santa Claus and whatever it is. Uh, the children will receive their presents during the evening. Yeah, we always had that on Christmas Eve. There might be a knock at the door and you might see a full sack of presents. Uh, let's see, 6th of December is the birthday of Sinterklaas. Uh, he leaves the Netherlands by steamboat by the way of the entrance of the port of Rotterdam, which is Europe's largest port. And they have some different things. Of course, there's different traditions here. Surprise presents are given on St. Uh, St. Nicholas Day. So we really didn't give out presents on Christmas Day at all. We did that during the Sinterklaas Day. So Sinterklaas was different than... You know, the religious holiday in uh, Holland was much more important than mixing up the two. Here we have a Santa Claus coming on the same day that Jesus is uh, born and things like that. In uh, Dutch, happy Merry Christmas can be said to uh, blah, 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 nothing more interesting than that. I thought now we'd go to my second uh, calling, which was Canada. Let's see if I can find that. Canada, let's see if there's anything special in Canada. <coughs> There we go, right there. Christmas in Canada. Okay, a very large country, people of very many different cultures. Because of this, there's a lot of different Christmas traditions in Canada. Many of the traditions, celebrations come from French, English, Irish, Scottish, German, Norwegian, and Ukraine. And, of course, the First Nations people, too. People in Canada send Christmas cards to their friends and family. Uh, many Canadians open their gifts on Christmas Eve. Yeah, we always did that. Some only open their stockings on Christmas Eve, and others choose one gift to open and then the rest on Christmas Day. Yeah, it was a real culture shock for me when I, I was first married in uh, the United States back in 1965. Uh, I, the first Christmas was over at my uh, uh, parents-in-law house. And, of course, we had this big tradition in our house that my dad would hand out the presents one by one so each of us could see what was being opened. And everybody, there was a la-la-la and a nice little celebration with each one, and I got used to that. And so I remember that first Christmas with my in-laws, and I'm sitting at the table, and uh, we are all eating breakfast, and then uh, her dad says, okay, let's open presents. And everybody runs to the tree and starts ripping everything. And I'm just sitting there. Because I'm not used to this thing, you know. And so, so they had all their presents open like 10 or 15 minutes. And they're sitting there huffing and puffing and looking at stuff. And I hadn't even opened anything. They say, what's wrong with you? So, you know, Trish editions are just funny that way. It's just, I, I was rather shocked. I was, oh, my God. They're just, and it's a different culture. So my thinking was, oh, these the people are barbarians. They don't really care about the gifts, just care about their own. Where in Holland, uh, you know, we cared about each other's gifts. But who knows, you know, it's, this is the way we were brought up, anyway. Okay, so the main Christmas meal in Canada is often roast turkey with vegetables and all the trimmings like mashed potatoes and vegetables. Uh, traditional uh, famous Christmas desserts include Christmas plum puddings and mince meat. Christmas crackers are often uh, popular with many people in Canada, Canada as well. You know, one thing we did in Holland, I remember, if you got a piece of chocolate written in your initial. For some reason in Holland, that was a tradition. If you got that, you were concerned very special. And every year I got the N, you know, and if it's your initial, that's really even better. You know, so. uh, people from different backgrounds in Canada uh, have their favorite foods at Christmas. They have, a lot of people go skiing, skating, tobogganing, or possible if there's snow, and usually there is. Yeah, Canadian children also believe in Santa Claus. Canadians are especially proud to say that the country is the home of Santa Claus. Santa Claus Parade in Toronto is one of the oldest and largest uh, Santa parades in the world. It started in uh, 1913. <clears throat> the children along the route followed Santa and marched along with him. It's been taking place over 100 years and now a huge event, kind of like the parade for the Macy's Parade, I guess it is. Eastern Canada, the province of Nova Scotia, is known all over the world for its fir and pine Christmas trees. Uh, let's see. 
So there's lots of different traditions in Canada too, and they have their candies here. All the different kinds of desserts. Uh, many people of French descent have a huge feast or party on Christmas Eve called Revelon that uh, lasts well into the early hours of, hours of Christmas morning after taking part in Christmas Eve Mass. When people are at the Midnight Mass, they hope that Santa will visit their ho house and leave gifts for their children under the tree. Traditional Christmas meals for people in Quebec is a stew made of, from pig's feet. Many people have a venison or a pork or beef. Stick around, folks. I got a lot more Christmas. I'll be right back. to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balanced results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-418. 8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com let him know you heard him on tfnn and save up to 100 dollars on a special package just for tfnn listeners act today If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back to the show, and I've got this uh, article here, WhyChristmas.com, and it talks about all the Christmases around the world. I'm going to do a couple more of these. Christmas in China. In China, only 1% of the people are Christians, so most people only know a few things about Christmas because of this. Christmas is, uh, is often only celebrated in major cities. In these big cities, there are Christmas trees, lights, and other decorations in the streets, in department stores, etc. Santa Claus is called Shen Dan Leo Ren and has grottos in shops like uh, in Europe and in America. The postman might dress up as Santa when delivering letters before Christmas. 
Uh, more young people are celebrating Christmas in cities where Christmas parties are becoming popular, and it's also time when the young couples will be gifts to each other, like on Valentine's Day, like a little, little lover swap. In uh, Chinese uh, Christmas, let's see, <clears throat> only a few people have a Christmas tree. If uh, people have a tree, it's normal to, to have a plastic one and might be decorated with paper chains, paper flowers, and paper ladrons. They call that the tree of light. Uh, the Christmas trees that most people see are in the shopping malls. The strange thing is that most of the world's plastic Christmas trees and Christmas decorations are made in China, but the people making them might not have decorations like them in their own home at Christmas time. A tradition that's become popular on Christmas Eve is giving apples. Many stores have apples wrapped up in Christmas uh, colored Christmas paper for sale. People give apples on Christmas Day because Christmas uh, Chinese Christmas Eve is called uh, Peng Ye, meaning peaceful or quiet evening, which translates from the carol a uh, silent night. The word for apple in Mandarin is Pingu. Sounds like a word for peace. People do go caroling, although not many people understand what the heck they're singing. <laughs> uh, people who are Christians in China go to special services, going to mass has become very, very popular. The other one I'd like to read from is Russia, because I know nothing about that. Ah, here we go. Here we go, Russia. In days of the Soviet Union, Christmas was not celebrated very much. New Year's was made into an important time. Following the revolution in 1917, Christmas was banned as a religious holiday in 1929, and Christmas trees were banned until 1935 when they turned into New Year's trees. People did want to celebrate Christmas. They did it in a secret just with just their families. After the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, people were free to celebrate Christmas again, but still quieter and a smaller holiday than it is anywhere else. Uh, New Year's is also when Grandfather Frost, known in Russia as uh, Dead Moraz, brings presents to children. He's always accompanied by his granddaughter. On New Year's Eve, children hold hands, making a circle around a Christmas tree. Uh, when they appear, uh, let's see. Christmas in Russia is normally celebrated on January 7th. Okay, the date is different because the Russian Orthodox Church uses the old Julian calendar for the religious days. That must be what they use also. And this is a pretty picture here of cathedral. Some people fast completely until the first star appears in the night sky. Uh, they eat a kind of porridge made from wheat or rice, served with honey, poppy seeds, fruit, especially berries and dried fruit like raisins. Chop walnuts. Uh, other popular Christmas Eve foods include uh, beet, beetroot soup, borscht, or vegan potluck, served with individual vegetable pies, often with cabbage, potato, and mushrooms. They've uh, also used sauerkraut, uh, porridge dishes such as buckwheat with fried onions, fried mushrooms, salads are made from vegetables like mushrooms, uh, maybe tomatoes, also potatoes, or root vegetable salads. The meal consists of 12 dishes, representing the 12 disciples of Jesus. Following the meals, the meals they have prayers. A lot of people go to church. Uh, they often uh, wa don't wash their dishes till they get back. <laughs> yeah, it might be 4 a.m. The main the meal in Christmas Day is often uh, more of a feast with dishes like roast pork and Goose, meat dumplings they have, fruit pies. The Russian Christmas cookies are called kozalya, or are made the shape of a sheep, goat, or a deer. In some areas, children go caroling, singing around the homes of their friends and family. And there's a lot more in here. Anyway, <clears throat> I want to, uh, I'm going to put this in the newsletter for us. You can uh, go to all these different countries if you wish. So there, it's in the Hell Signals newsletter. There's another tradition that I wanted to talk about briefly, and it's a Dutch tradition. Let me bring that up.
Where is it? Oh, there we go. Went around. Okay, so this is called Nixon. And that's not our uh, former president. The art of purposely doing nothing. Doing nothing but with a purpose to do nothing or no purpose at all may help decrease anxiety, bring creativity to the surface, and boost productivity. The Dutch have perfected the practice of doing nothing or Nixon so well that they are some of the happiest people in the world. Hey, there you go. Uh, I encourage you to loosen your uh, concept of time and productivity and practice this simple exercise from the Netherlands. Allowing your brain to rewire from stress by doing nothing is a wellness practice worth implementing. If you are sitting in a cafe, you can indulge in some stress-busting Nixon, but, sip, uh, but sipping your coffee and looking out the window. This is uh, definitely a tradition in Holland. I remember talking about this with my dad, and he says that's one of the real prized things about Holland is just sitting around doing nothing for a while. And in this day and age, I think it becomes more important because when I do this now, just sitting around doing nothing, I'm always just going for that phone again or the iPad or doing something. In fact, now it seems like I want to do two things at once. You know, watch TV and the iPad's there, the phone's nearby, uh, maybe I have a book. It's just crazy. So we've got to simplify things, and this is the reason I brought this to your attention. There's this uh, author of this has studied the practices of the happiest people on Earth and wherever they reside. In the blue zones, people often find ways to downshift daily. They are not immer, uh, immune to stress, but they have routines that help to minimize and shed that stress. In Akira, they take daily naps. In Okinawa, they find time to think of their ancestors. In Sardinia, they meet friends and neighbors for uh, daily happy hours. The Dutch have simpler lifestyle habits, which helps them keep them at the top of the satisfaction starts. We know Dutch children are some of the happiest in the world, and Holland also enjoys some of what our research shows builds the happiest society. A shorter average workday, uh, national health care, and a reduction in tuition for the university system. So, if mindfulness exercises and meditation are leaving you wonder if you're doing them right, Ty Nixon, don't overthink it. Set a time to sit and stare out the window, allowing yourself to wander aimlessly and let yourself be me. Yeah, I think that's the kick of it. We need to get back to that. And I'll be back in a few minutes, folks. Stick around. Thanks a lot. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated Traded fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average
average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back to the show. I have a new article here called Plants Emit Informative Airborne, Bound, Airborne Sounds Under Stress. <sighs> oh, yes. Wonder if the vegetarians are going to like this. Stress plants show uh, altered phenotypes, including changes in color, smell, and shape. Yet the possibility that plants emit airborne sounds when stressed, similar to many animals, has not been investigated until now. Here we show to our knowledge for the first time that stressed plants emit airborne sounds that can be recorded remotely, both in acoustic chambers and in greenhouses. We recorded 65 ultrasonic sounds. 10 cms from tomato and tobacco plants implying that these sounds could be detected by some organisms from up to several meter, meters away we developed machine learning models that were capable of distinguishing between plant sounds and general noises and identifying the condition of the plants dry cut and intact based solely on the emitted sounds our, our results suggest that animals humans and possibly even other plants could emit sounds or could use sounds emitted by a plant to gain information about the plant's condition. Uh, more in investigation on plant bioacoustics in general and on sound emissions in plants in particular may open new avenues for understanding plants and their interactions with the environment and may have significant impacts on agriculture. So kind of interesting that uh, plants do probably have feelings too. So, you know, there's so little we know. It uh, always boggles the mind when you find out new things are coming to light. So maybe they're screaming when they're being cut. I don't know. Here's another article. Scientists discover marijuana may have a surprising effect on sperm. Uh, of weeds, many effects on the bodies, marijuana's impact on sperm is probably the least obvious and the most elusive. This re research on weed and sperm is contradictory at best. Some hint that it could have benefits for, for sperm production. Others suggest it takes a negative toll. But in September 2019, scientists got a little co closer to understanding what exactly marijuana does to sperm. When the scientists analyzed testicular tissue, and sperm samples from a small sample of 15 men, they found the uh, uh, cannabinoid receptors, or the cannabinoids, as well as the cannabinoid receptors, and the enzymes needed to break down those chemicals down. They, their findings were published in the scientific reports. So these uh, cannabinoids and newer transmitters resemble cannabinoids, that the chemicals that occur naturally in cannabis. The body's uh, system extends from the gut to the brain, and the results demonstrate that this system extends all the way into the sperm-making machinery, too. Scientists found traces of this uh, into terrestrial uh, tissue, and they also found genetic transcripts coded for these receptors and evidence that the enzymes that break down these chemicals in, uh, in germ cells, and those are the cells that become sperm. So... 
He says, people like me have for generations been focusing on the hormone aspects, but overlook the possibility that these compounds may participate in normal sperm and hormone production. The presence of these in endocannabinoids begs a new question. What happens when they flood that system with more of these chemicals when you smoke weeds? Right now, the, the, uh, uh, the scientists aren't sure. It may come down to the actual amount you smoke. They noted from 365 men that had smoked weed before had higher sperm counts, and that 297 who hadn't smoked before then than 297. Lower levels of marijuana could benefit sperm production, low levels of marijuana, uh, because of its effect on the anaboid system. They also play a role in fertility, but these benefits are lost with the higher levels of marijuana consumption and this kind of works for just about every kind of drug doesn't it take a little bit there seems to be a benefit take too much and maybe the benefits are gone who knows so let's go on i've got a little bit more here of course here's the guide for the microdosing i wanted to definitely let you know about this one so this is pretty comprehensive guide from the third wave a website that is of course suggesting that microdosing can be good for many different people. And uh, uh, this will be, of course, in the newsletter. But they have a good table of context, and it really goes to how to do the microdosing itself and how to keep it uh, and how long you should keep it and how often you should be doing it. And it's, uh, you know, they kind of say skip a couple of days. So I'll put this in the newsletter. I'm not going to go over it now. It's really just too comprehensive, but I think it's a good guide if anybody's interested in, in microdosing with the psilocybin. Uh, if you have anxiety, uh, I think this might be something that would be useful to you. So I'll put that into the Health Signals newsletter right now. Uh, something else I want to talk about. Yeah, this one right here. Egypt will be the first country to have these different types of forests that are vertical and uh, you know with the prime uh, the the solar minimum maybe just around the corner when it's going to really affect the food production this may be another way to get our food production in sync um, this of course they're doing this because it's in cities to save space but also they're saying to soak up some of the uh, pollutants and this is what trees have been good at and this is why we you know when we cut down forests and that it's uh, it's really not good for the planet the concept took off in 2014 with a pair of residential 110 and 76 meter tall buildings with over 900 trees and 20,000 smaller plants pretty amazing huh So the plants and trees in this forest city are expected to annually absorb 10,000 tons of CO2 and 50,000 tons of pollutants while producing 900 tons, tons of oxygen. So a real benefit. Some more pictures down here. Look at that. So this would be good for the people in the buildings too. I mean, you know, and there's nothing like going through the forest and smelling this. So if you're in a building and you've got trees and shrubs and things like that and you're smelling that that's the ozone that we like so this is a real good system and i think agriculture is going to go this way too we're going to have to find places even underground perhaps uh, to farm if our farming uh, areas are moving and right now it seems to be doing that already if you go into iowa utah um, kansas city and things like that things are getting flooded there's too much uh, participation crops are still in the ground hopefully some of those will be saved by springtime when it thaws but if we had another spring like we had la this year of course that spring was extended with snow and people couldn't harvest even the spring crops so you know a lot of these crops who sit over you know they sit in the uh, uh, fields over the winter time are still pretty good you can probably get about 75 percent for dark if you can get them back out and, they get, and they're dried out so we need more of stuff like this for sure so I'd like to remind you, first of all, to please pick up our Health Signals newsletter and also our One Shot Wonder, our Primal Edge. Keep you healthy. So 
Stick around, folks. I got a little bit more. I'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale is back. For two weeks only, we're offering the largest bonuses of the year on all Tiger Dollar purchases. Normally, you can get a 10 to 20% bonus on your purchase, but for the Tiger Dollar Holiday Special, we've doubled the normal bonuses where you can now get up to a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars can be used for all TFNN newsletters, products, or services, are fully transferable, and never expensive. If you're a current TFNN newsletter subscriber, then this is a great time to buy Tiger Dollars and apply them to all your future transactions for instant added savings. And if you're considering signing up for any TFNN newsletters, webinars, or products in 2020, then get up to a 40% bonus now before this sale ends Sunday, December 22nd. For all the details and to purchase your Tiger Dollars with up to a 40% bonus, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. Uh, I'd like to remind you, first of all, next week I will not be here. We're traveling. Uh, my wife and I are leaving on Friday uh, to go see my kids up in Michigan. Our kids, I should say. And uh, so uh, next week I'll be off. Then I'll be uh, back for the uh, show just on Christmas or New Year's Eve. So, uh, this uh, came out, uh, are forever chemicals in our milk? Nobody has really been checking. And uh, this farmer who lives in New Mexico now, from Clovis, New Mexico, uh, has, uh, let's see, he got an unexpected visit from an official with a Cannon Air Force base, which uh, adjoins his Highland Dairy property. The official gave him a letter indicating that tests found his well water be contaminated with pre and uh, the polyphenol uh, substances, PFAS, a group of chemicals that have been linked to reproductive and development problems as well as cancer. The chemicals had migrated into the groundwater from foam used in firefighting exercises at the military base. Uh, Ship and his family, the letter said, should immediately stop drinking the water. Now, Shep is a third-generation dairy family, the uh, farmer, his family had farmed in the Netherlands and in California before moving to New Mexico. And Shep has been raising cows and crops here since 1992. The Air Force uh, officials told him they'd supply his family with bottled water. But then he wondered about his cows. He says, milk is 90% water. He said, it hit me like a rock that my cows are drinking this polluted water. 
Testing by the New York, uh, New Mexico Department of Agriculture showed that his milk was contaminated at levels 70 times above the federal ad, uh, advisory health limit for the PFAS. The compounds are often called the forever chemicals because they don't break down and instead accumulate over time in the environment and the bodies of animals and humans. When he found out his water was polluted, neither the state agriculture department nor the Food and Drug Administration had a protocol for testing milk for the PFAS. They developed a test especially for his milk. And when he first, uh, uh, the first samples were tested, he made a decision to dump his milk in order to, to avoid selling a contaminated product. This will go into the next newsletter. Folks, have a nice Christmas. I'll see you before the New Year's, and uh, be safe out there. Bye-bye.